I'm here today with Roy Lozano of Downset to talk about the upcoming album, Maintain, out June 10th on Nuclear Blast. Stay safe out there while we're having this conversation. Eh? Eyes on the road. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for taking My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for taking the time. So, so let's start from prob probably the obvious question. 80-year hiatus between records, not the longest hiatus for you guys. What, what, what causes these long breaks between albums? You know, you know, there's different circumstances that happen along the way with, with, with bands, especially our band. Um, we've, had, uh, we've had some fallouts. Um, we've had times where we try to set up you know, every album we, with the intention of having all, as many original members as we can. Uh, try, you know, we've tried to get everybody back together uh the original members to do these albums but uh there's times where uh there's just people you know guys in the band who um have certain things going on in their, in their lives and and sometimes they just can't do it or you know sometimes it's it's not easy being doing a band you know um it's like we're brothers and and we fight sometimes and we love each other uh sometimes you know we we can or can't coexist um so uh, this time around um since let's say from check your people there was a hiatus and then we did the the universal album which i wasn't a part of and the one blood album and it was i took a i took a hiatus for a while and, and was playing in different bands of power flow and cypress hill um but you know i wish you know i wish we could you know, somehow, you know, with, with the, I'm really happy with the lineup that we have now. We've worked really hard. Uh, we've been now together with this lineup for two years, you know. So for me to say like, okay, yeah, I would love, I would love one day to have the original lineup to do another album. And I'm sure the new guys would love that too. But right now it's like we have, we have this band who it's, who it's very tight. With the with the new members Bobby Ponte and, and uh, Philip Gonzalez on bass and Bobby Ponte and drums, and so you know th this last hiatus between uh, One Blood and the Maintain album, you know it's it's really hard to say why it took so long. Uh, we've tried to get you know we always try to get down set together, but there's there's just circumstances. There's sometimes there's bumps in the road that that this band hits. Uh, we have we have a lot of good luck. Sometimes our luck is rough, but um, you know uh, it's it's a tough one to answer. But we're here. Um, we made it, and we were able to to do a demo uh, during the pan the first wave of the pandemic. We lost our manager to COVID. Uh, is right after we got the record deal, he helped us. He shopped the record. Scott Koenig shopped the the demo, and um, it was that it was that that it was that first March, that first pandemic, uh, put us put us back on 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 a on a four month hiatus, which was not our by choice. You know, we couldn't go back in the studio. The files are stuck in the studio, and then we had to wait. Went back in, like, recorded the rest of the, the demo. Scott Koenig shopped it, and then we got the deal on Nuclear Blast. Um, so, and then it took a while. It took, you know, it, it it took a good year to bounce back from everything that was going on. It was really scary uh, at the time. We we were very confused. We didn't know, you know, when we, that pandemic came. You know, a lot of people had were very confused about it. We were going to pre-production, the whole band, uh, scared, scared that we were going to get sick. And it was just, it was a process. A lot of things tried to get in the way, but we, we, you know, we held tight, we held strong and, and, and that's why we called the album maintain because we were, we had to maintain within ourselves to, to keep it together and fight it through, record the album and, and, and you know, God willing, we prayed, and and now you know everything is 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 
is going to pl according to plan. We just dropped the, the video and and the album comes out in June 10th. So as much as I don't like to be on hiatus, I want to be on the road every minute of the day. I love to go on the road. I love to record as much as possible. And it's just the parameters that, that we were given. And, and it's, you know, that's pretty much how the what I have crumbles. as far as that hiatus. Yeah. How, how the I'm sorry? Crumbles. It's just how the cookie crumbles, you know? That That's it. That's it. And, and so we have to make the best of it. And, and this is what we got. And we're really, we're really happy with the turnout of the album. And um, we just can't wait for it to drop. And then, um, you know, hope to come on and start playing some shows. We're, we're, we're a little bit behind uh, as far as doing some shows right now. But, you know, that's, that's the plan to get back out there and start doing some shows. So, so when you look at, at the time for this album, for the time to make this album, uh, that break, did it, did it impact the creative process and make that creative process more challenging or did it make the creative I, process more gratifying? Both. Um, it was, it was already challenging to begin with. It's, uh, you know, you have, we have a, a lot of high expectations for ourselves and so do our followers. And, um, you know, it's, uh, we, we have to go in there and, and, and please ourselves first. Because if we don't please ourselves, and I don't think we can please our, our following. Um, if we go out to try to please the following, I don't think we're going to get, you know, we're, we're really digging within ourselves. So um, the circumstances made it more challenging. Um, and um, But uh, we have a lot of fight in us. Uh, especially, you know, uh, Ray Oropesa, he's a hard worker. Uh, and then our, our producer, Nick Jett from Terror, he, he really was, was the backbone for everything. And, and the guy really, really helped us and, and made things a lot easier this time around. Whereas before uh, we had, we had producer, our producer from back in the day, Roy Z, he did the first three albums. And then the next two were self-produced by the band. But those, those productions were different. Um, they were challenging in their own ways. It was more of a struggle to try to fit everybody's music into, in, into every song. And you know, everybody wanted to be a part of every song. And, and sometimes some parts from some of the guys didn't fit. So it might have created a little bit of animosity. This time around, it was nothing like that. We were... We needed as much as material as possible, and, and the material wasn't coming out the way we wanted to. Um, it was coming off slow. Um, it wasn't as exciting off the bat. It was it, it was a lot of grinding, a, a lot of a, a lot of bringing a lot of music to the table. Uh, you know, we needed a lot of help within the, the guys that we had from our, within ourselves. We had to dig really deep and concentrate and. And, and, and just try, you know, what we try to do for this album is we try to go back, obviously, with, you know, we try to keep our, we, our sound modern and we try to progress every album and, mod, you know, to, to keep up with that, with the modern sound and how technology is advancing a lot in the recording field. So our, our objective was we wanted to go back and revisit the original sound of Downset the original demo that we first recorded before the first album. And uh, we had a different tuning. We were dropped to, we were tuned to drop C. And uh, the very first demos that were recorded as Downset, we did five songs and they're all in drop C. When we, when we got the, when we got signed to Mercury Polygram, we went back in the studio to do a pre-production. And along the way, um, by default, we ended up recording everything in drop C sharp. And then from then on, the second album was in drop C sharp. The third album was in drop C sharp. There was a few songs here and there in, in A and, and B and, and standard. But the, by default, the band ended up being the sound was in drop C sharp by accident. We don't know how it happened, but it did. 
so we figured you know along the you know i had to i when i list because it was always we didn't know that you know back in those days that drop c was still kind of a default we were trying to do drop drop d but somehow we ended up in drop c sharp recorded the first demo and it sounded great it sounded really heavy so this time around we we figured it all out we figured out where all our tunings were and then we decided hey let's start doing stuff in drop c like the original sound so we did we did uh we did about four songs in this out on main on the maintain album on on drop c we did some other songs in drop c sharp we also recorded in and uh so we wanted to give this album some uh audio flavor you know a different a different when you hear it you hear it you, you're going to hear a song and it's going to come off in a different tuning and then another tuning so it's going to give it flavor so it so we well, the objective was revisit the old sound with with the modern sound in our mind uh with with the progressed down set keep it a little more up tempo because a lot of the uh, a lot of the downset music was more of a groovy slower kind of like black sabbath slow and that's who, how we first started you know with black sabbath meets ice cube and let's mix the sound like it's hip-hop fusion that we were trying to do with some heavy some heavy rhythmic grooves and um so we wanted to revisit have that groovy sound but yet pick up the tempo and and i think we achieved that yes. so yes it's def definitely very gratifying um we 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 accepted the challenge and we i believe we're victorious and definitely was very gratifying very gratifying with the challenge and the outcome it, yeah it was you know it's it's like a long, a long marathon. Uh, sound wise, when I was listening to this album, I mean, I've been listening to you guys since since the early 90s. So when I when I put this album on, I, I felt like it had it, it wasn't a complete departure from the past. It's not like you guys went in a completely new direction and now downset is playing metalcore or something like that. That's not what right. I you know, and I was happy that that wasn't the case. Uh, so there was definitely a sense of progression, but at the same time, a sense of of honoring the beginning. I, I got that from the sound all around. It felt like, okay, it sounds fresh, but it also sounds old school. It's a little bit like kind of caught in between those two worlds, but I thought that you guys navigated that sound perfectly. Thank you. That was it. That was the objective. And uh, that's music to my ears that you could say that because that's exactly what I wanted. Just that I really wanted to have the vintage downset sound and, you know, and reaching back and going back to that drop C tuning, which what that was what gave us the original sound. I don't know if you heard the very first demos of Downset, but they're all in drop C. And then if you hear the first album, you can hear the difference. And so, you know, and and with through time since uh, let's see what we, since nine, 1994 and then uh, I myself was on the first record. I didn't, I, I had a, we had a fallout. I had a fallout with the guys for the second album. So I wasn't on the second album. Then I came back for the third, left. And then I did my other bands with Power Flow. And then I, I came back to, to, you know, Ray gave me a call. He gave me a call out of the blue. He says, hey man, I miss being friends. I'm not calling to, you know, to try to recruit you back and form Downset. I just want to be friends. I want to, you know, just, you know, I miss being friends. I said, you know what? Me too. And that's no problem, Ray. I, I, you know, I would love to be friends again and hang out. And then in the same sentence, I told, I told him, I go, Hey, and listen, if you're flirting with the idea of reforming downset, let's do it right now. I'm ready right now. Let's do it. And, oops, oh, sorry. And he's, he's like, okay. It was it was a perfect call and and that was two years ago, that was two years ago when when it started, and then um, and then you know it, it, it and it it's like it was starting from the bottom, it was starting with absolutely nothing and we had to reform the band, we had to rethink about what we wanted to do, 
call our old manager to see if he was interested in working with us. And it was just everything, just starting from scratch. It, and so, it, you know, there was times where we felt like, man, you know, it, can we make this happen? But we persevered and, and we, we, we just, we went for it and here we are. And I think it's, I think, you know, we're, we're all really satisfied with the outcome and really happy. So let me ask you this about the lyrical content. Listening to you guys back in the 90s, uh, I mean, you guys never really changed your approach as far as using, using your lyrics and your music for, for creating social awareness in terms of, of painting a picture of the world that you guys see from your own point of view. Now, you're doing the same thing with this record so many years later. Do you feel a little bit frustrated that the issues that you guys were bringing to the forefront back in the early 90s are still some of the same issues you're bringing to the forefront today? No, no, because I felt from why I was doing it and why Ray was doing it. Ray was doing it for his reasons and I was doing it for my reasons. And, and at the time, it was difficult for a, a Latino band to get a record deal. Uh, but we were, we, were, um, we, were, we were a racially mixed band and, and it was, it, it, and we were, we were, we were, we were the band called Social Justice. We were a straight edge band. And then Ray and I decided to break off and try to hybrid some music. And we did, we got together with Roy Z uh, who is my, a, a good friend of mine, Rogelio Ramirez is his real name. Roy Z produced a lot of bands, but at that time he was doing his band and he was my guitar teacher. And I brought the project to him and we started to write music and it was just the three of us before we added James Morris, Brian Schwager, the other original members, Chris Lee. And, um, and in the beginning, Ray was really, um, he wanted to really, re re really be as political as, he is, as possible because he really wanted to express what, what was on his mind. And a lot of it was just talking about being underprivileged and not having that chance that a lot of the guys like from the west side or from orange county or the, the really nice neighborhoods the chances like a lot of these bands that, that were came you know a lot of these there was a lot of bands from those neighborhoods that wouldn't ask us to play maybe because we were from the east side or because it was just too many latinos in the band what have you but at that time there was you know, it, it seemed to me that it was hard for Latin guys to get in a band, make a band, and, and, and just and get a record deal. It was really difficult at that time. Well, we got our, we got the record deal and it was, it was, it was astonishing for a lot of people, a band, this band from the East Side, Pacoima and San Fernando Valley got a record deal on a major label, which was unheard of it was almost a miracle and i think that was the beginning uh that was the beginning for me and what i saw we opened the doors for other latinos in our in los angeles and the punk rock scene the metal scene it seemed it just it wasn't thriving there was a lot of uh, racial division and there was a lot of division between you know, the music scene itself, you know, you're straight edge, you go to straight edge shows, you're a punk rocker, just go to punk shows, uh, heavy metal, you just heavy metal. And this was in the 90s, early 90s. In the 80s, it was different. It seemed like it was more, more of a mix together. But the 90s, for some reason, I felt there was some, some sort of polarization, sort of like the way we're today. And so when the alley riots happened, that's when it really, really, really stood out for us. So to me, when I see, when I go to shows in LA, um, I see a, a lot more of what I wanted to see back in the 90s. And I see a lot more joy with people. I see a lot of, a lot of uh, the melting pot of Los Angeles. It's, it's racially mixed. And now I see these shows where it's 
racially mixed, everything. And you have Asians, you have blacks, you have whites and Latinos. And, and, and I see a lot more Latino bands uh, doing shows and, and making shows and, and promoting shows and having, so for, for me uh, on that, on that issue, um, I'm happy to see uh, a, a lot of, uh, you know, a, a more of a mix crowd and, and, the, and that division is not there anymore. Politically, I think, I think we're going to have the same similar problems that we've had. It's, it's, it's going to change, but it's going to stay the same. Um, you know, I'm willing to, to give it an effort and express my opinion of what I think is right or wrong. Um, but not necessarily, you know, I'm not, I don't write lyrics for downset. Ray writes all the lyrics and it's been that way for since, you know, and we've accepted it. Um, we've tried, you know, band members have tried to write lyrics, but, you know, Ray's an ex ex exceptionally like, brilliant when it comes to lyrics. And we can never really match the, our lyric, our poems, or or whatever we have. We, it, you know, raise, raise, raise a mastermind when it comes to putting together lyrics and songs. And um, and I just I, you know, I tried to write lyrics once, but no, I just had, you know, I, I just decided that you know what, the lyrics are for Ray to write. He's he's the singer. Um, I'm here to bring the music. And the production, and then that's how, you know, we got along. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's 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 some things that I'm disappointed in, but it's it's progressed out here in Los Angeles since since the '80s and the '90s, where where it's a, there is definitely more unity in between uh, the the genres of the music. And the young kids, uh, it seems to me like the younger kids are not seeing the color as when we were seeing when it was divided. So that's my answer. To uh, on, on that note, I have, yeah. I have one more question for you. Is, and that is, you know, not just with Downset, but with Power Flow, you've, you've seen the, the genre when it comes to like hardcore and and, and and the the kids from urban areas and how they they adapt and how they move towards that genre. What has impressed you the most about hardcore, as as a musical drive, as a musical scene, from the start of Downset to where you guys are today? Okay, I'm sorry, I I did miss the last the, um your last sentence because of of the reception. Oh, the can you say? Yeah, can you say one more time? I, I apologize. Yeah, no, no, no worries, no worries. I, I just want to get your take because I mean, you have a, a a much wider understanding of how the hardcore scene sound wise was in the eighties, nineties versus what it is today. So, how do you see that progression of that specific genre through this period of time? Yeah, well, you know, I'll tell you what, it's gone way, you know, for hardcore because when hardcore first started. It was, it was an offshoot of punk rock. Uh, it was, it was kids who, who, who wanted to make a difference, who didn't want to party, who didn't want to be a dirty punk rocker and not, and, and be careless. There was, there was scenes, there was, there was break off of people who, who wanted to do something more positive. Right. So, but the music was not as intricate, not as intricate. It was still punk rock it was still punk rock but the difference was was the lyrics and maybe the look a little bit and you know the x's on their hands or or what have you and in the 80s there was a big mix you had you had bands like you had punk bands you had ska bands metal bands and thrash bands that played together and it was it was not uh it, it wasn't you know uh how, how do you say uh um, uh, you know, they, it was more accepted. Well, when when Straight Edge started happening, um, things started to get divided a little bit. And then the, the, to me, it seemed like the Straight Edgers were very selective of where they played the shows and who would, 
who was on on the bill and then who would come to the shows and it, it changed um things and then and then the genres then people you know bands started to to really divide themselves and say okay well we're we're doom metal we're not heavy metal we're thrash core metal we're we're black metal we're we're punk rock hardcore we're punk rock straight edge you know they, you know they go into these little categories and and through the 90s uh it seemed like it started to die in the beginning of the 90s where in the 80s mid to late 80s the hardcore scene metal scene was really hot and then in the early 90s it died and it died all the way until i would say after like in 98 in 99 it started to pick up again and now now it's really it's it's really exciting it's there's a lot more bands there's a lot of people involved you know social media or let's say the internet really you know it, it brought it all out connected a lot of people uh, i call some people use uh the, the internet or social media these days some people kind of go crazy with the selfies and and over posting but at the same time it, it's a good way to connect now on the music on the music level you know the hardcore straight edge hardcore has changed and to me it seems like it's more heavy metal it's become more metal it's become more intricate people have you know are, are getting um really into their guitar playing and, and, and getting a little more technical. And, and I'm seeing a lot of the, the talent of guitar players and drummers and bass players. Uh, I, see, I see the level of, of talent and skill at a higher level. It's amazing to see how, uh, uh, how well people are playing these days. And so it's definitely progressed. The sound has progressed. Now, I think these, these days, like I just recently went to a terror show. Terror, I went to a show. I see, I saw them play at the Orange Grove Amphitheater, and they sold the place out. Eight hundred people, and that's a lot for a hardcore band. Uh, and I saw a lot of unity. I saw a lot of different types of kids, from heavy metal to punk, to suicidals to straight edge, and it and it feels like it feels like the mid the mid eighties again. And, you know, it's, it's pretty satisfying to see this progression, definitely. Well, uh, thank you very much for your time, man. It was an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for your insight. Be best of luck with the release. Downset is putting out Maintain June 10th on Nuclear Blast. So once again, yeah. thank you. And I hope to see you guys on the road soon. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. If you need anything, email me or... or Call me or if you want to redo the whatever you need, you let me know. I'm I'm always willing to to uh, talk to you and anybody who wants to talk about my music. Oh man, I appreciate I appreciate you taking the time and stay safe on the road. All the best. Enjoy Thank the weekend. Thank you, buddy. Enjoy the weekend. Thank Take you. Care. Have a great weekend. Bye bye. Bye.